I made some notes in my journal coming from Lisbon, Portugal to uh, New York City. And the title of my list of things here was called The Seven Fundamentals for Success. And I'd like to take just a few minutes and go through these seven fundamentals with you. I think you'll find it uh, very interesting. The first fundamental is a constant plan for setting, rearranging, evaluating, and strengthening the purpose of your goals. Setting goals is a very important part of our life's process. It's a basic fundamental. In fact, if you will work hard on setting goals, put together a plan for setting goals, reevaluate them, rearrange them, constantly talk about them, go over them again and again, I tell you what this process will do in my personal opinion. It'll put you in what's known as the top 5%. And if you want to be successful, if you want your life to really change in major ways, this is one of the fundamentals. Guess how many people have a constant plan for setting, rearranging, evaluating, and strengthening the purpose of their goals? The answer is very few. In fact, if you will do this, you will become among the few who do that become the envy of all who watch. So that's number one fundamental for success. Get together with your family, your wife, your husband, your children, your business colleagues, and make it one of the major fundamentals in your life, constantly setting, rearranging, evaluating, and strengthening the purpose of your goals. That's number one fundamental for success. Here's number two. The second fundamental is a clear picture of what you intend to do with your present resources. That's a fundamental. Figuring out a plan of what to do and how to manage your present resources. Most everyone I talk to has already got something. The big question is, what are you doing with it? Most everyone has some time, they have some resources, they have some money, or they have a paycheck, or they have some kind of resources, or they have some kind of net worth. The big question is, what are you doing with it? Where are you investing it? Where are you putting it? There's a little simple talk I'm giving now, and it's especially designed for the kids, called the care and feeding of the goose that lays the golden eggs. First of all, you've got to understand about society and about money. You've got to understand how to earn it, where to get it, where it comes from, and the importance of managing it. Kids ought to be taught from the time they're just small what to do with a dollar. If, if a child has a dollar and goes and spends it, right away they've developed the wrong habits. And sure enough, if they continue those poor management habits over the first dollar, you can imagine they're probably going to do the same poor things with those same dollars when they get older. The plans we learn when we're small, sure enough, are most often the plans we follow the rest of our lives. What to do with your money and where to put it. We teach in the care and feeding of the goose that lays the golden eggs. You've got to be a happy taxpayer. You've got to make sure some of your money goes into financial institutions so that successful people can borrow it and start other businesses that employ more people. Uh, you've got to make sure that uh, you give some of your money for charity. So for charity and for taxes and for savings and for the accumulation of capital, it's very important to have a management plan for your present resources so that at age 65, you don't wind up like most people do broke. You wind up with substance, you wind up with plenty to share, you wind up with plenty to enjoy. So that's the second fundamental for success. A plan for using all of your present resources wisely. Now here's the third fundamental for success. You need a plan, a detailed plan for the use of your work time. We call it a game plan. Most people try to design tomorrow and next week and next month in their head. They try to just decide what they're going to do. And most people don't even think that far ahead. They think, I have to get up in the morning and go to work and that's about the extent of it. 
but a game plan, a game plan for financial independence, a game plan for your work time, a game plan for your personal time. The family needs a game plan so that you won't miss some of the important things that are helpful to your life and to your success. The kids need a game plan. Mom needs a game plan. Dad needs a game plan. You need a business game plan. You need a game plan for your office. If you're in business, a game plan for your business. A detailed plan for the use of your work time. In the leadership seminar, we talk about how to put together this detailed plan for the day and for the week and for the month. How to stretch out a plan for six months and for a year. In doing business around the world, we found that you have to detail the plans in great detail. Otherwise, sure enough, you're going to miss something. So that's the third fundamental for success. And I can promise you that a detailed plan for the use of your work time will put you in the top 5% because most people don't have one. Now here's the fourth fundamental for success. Number four is a consistent plan for the gathering of knowledge. Most people get ideas just spasmodically, or when someone happens to come by, or they just happen to hear someone, or they happen to read a book that might have some ideas that could help to benefit their life. What I'm saying is we all need a consistent plan for the gathering of knowledge, a consistent plan for going to the library, a consistent plan for attending the lectures, attending the seminars. When you listen to a sermon, make sure you've got your journal to take notes. Wherever you go, gather knowledge, but gather it on purpose. Do it constantly, do it daily, and do it consistently. We need a consistent plan for reading books. Most people just read books haphazardly, spasmodically, or most people just don't read at all or they don't have a good plan for reading the right books. Sure enough, the man reads the comics instead of the classics. And he misses all the things that could really benefit his life because he doesn't have a plan. Here's a good thought to consider. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. Good ideas must be pursued. You must go where they are. You must seek them out. And there's an important Bible phrase that says, if you seek, if you search, you will find. Sure enough, a consistent plan for gathering knowledge, reading the books, attending the lectures, putting together ideas and having a place to capture them like a journal where you can repeat them and go over them. That's a fundamental that if you'll follow it, will put you in the top 5%. Guess how many people have a consistent plan for the gathering of knowledge? Answer, very few. And what you want to be is one of the very few. Now here's the fifth fundamental for being successful. Number five is an association of people of common interest in progress, success, ideas, and philosophy. If you have a constant association of people who can better your life and better your lifestyle, you can't believe the progress that you can make. Mr. Shelf shared with me when I first met him when I was 25 years old. He said, Jim, to do better, you've got to get around the right people. I have a good phrase for you. Never mistake the power of influence. The man says, well, I live here, but it doesn't really bother me. See, that's not true. He says, I'm around these people, but they really don't bother me. See, that's not true. Whoever you're around, Whoever you're with is exerting some kind of influence on your life. And what you must do, and this would be the good year to do it, the first year you've heard about it, is make plans to get around the right people. People who talk positive ideas. People who talk philosophy, the refinement of philosophy. See, just the latest joke won't help. You've got to get around people who read, people who are successful, and people who are growing and changing. Otherwise, your influence is going to be in the opposite direction. And I know most of us, wherever you work, you have to be around some negative influences. But what you must do is counterbalance that by an association of the right people 
getting around the right people who can help to change your life for the better. So that's one of the seven fundamentals, associating with the right people on a constant, consistent basis. So work on that one. And it's one of the seven fundamentals. If you will work on an association of the right people who can help you to grow financially, personally, spiritually, socially, sure enough, it'll put you in the top 5%. Guess how many people have an association of people of common interest in progress, success, ideas, and philosophy? Answer, very few. But be one of the few. That's number five. Here's number six. The sixth fundamental for success is a plan for the development of all your personal skills. One of the great things to learn in life is that you can learn a great deal. There's hardly anything you can't learn. If you wished, you could learn several languages. There's so many skills that you can develop that you want to make sure that you've got a timetable and a plan for developing all those skills. Don't settle for less than you can be. See, at the end of your life, you don't want to wake up and discover that you've only lived one-tenth of it. And the person you could have become, you let that slide. The skill you could have developed, you just didn't take the time. There's a great deal of discipline required in developing all of your personal skills, but I can tell you that it's well worth the discipline. Make sure you go to the classes. Make sure you do all that you possibly can to develop every skill you can from the skill of leadership, the skill of diplomacy, the skill of language, the skill of business. Whatever you can learn, make sure you take the time to learn it. Now here's the seventh and last fundamental for success. And this is a very important one. Mr. Shove taught me this one when I first met him at age 25. He called it lifestyle. Learning how to live. The seventh fundamental is a constant plan for figuring ways to live uniquely and to enjoy your present substance. Lifestyle is the challenge of learning how to live well. See, if you earned well and didn't live well, see, that would be pitiful. If a man made a great deal of money, but his personality didn't change and his lifestyle didn't change, his uniqueness didn't change, see, that would be pitiful. It's pitiful to find a man in a half million dollar home and sure enough, he's a $5,000 man. Learning the skills of lifestyle, what to do with your money so that you get joy from it. Shof taught me the simplest little things, like tip. He taught me what the word tip meant. I didn't know. I'm from a little farm community. What did I know about tip? He said tip, the word T-I-P, tip, comes from a little phrase called to ensure promptness. And the more I thought about that, then I understood what he meant. If a tip is to ensure promptness, when should you give it? Answer, up front. You don't wait to see whether or not you've gotten good service to decide to tip. You ensure good service. Mr. Shove said to me, sophisticated people make sure they get good service. It's just one of the little things to learn called lifestyle. How to enjoy your family, how to enjoy your money, how to enjoy your time and your substance, how to enjoy your own thoughts, figuring ways to anticipate your family's needs, to do it with joy instead of animosity, to get great delight in the substance you now have. Most people say, if I had more money, I'd be happier. But happiness is something you have to work on besides money because the money won't make you happy. Those are the seven fundamentals for success. Goals, a plan for goals, a clear picture of how to use your resources, a plan for your work time, a plan for gathering knowledge, association with the right people, a plan for developing your skills, and lifestyle. If you'll follow those seven fundamentals, I can promise you, life will work well for you. I want to thank you for giving me this time to spend with you. It's been just a few minutes, but I hope the few ideas I've had to share from my journal 
have been uh, valuable to you.